Hey everyone, it's Cassie and welcome back for another YouTube video here on my channel. Today I'm going to be making a slimline card and let's talk about the products we're going to be using today. They're all Trinity Stamps products. This stamp set is called Serious Celebration and I um, just had this idea in my head using all these products and it's been there for a while. This stamp set is the You Lift Me Up and it has the matching dies to go with it. Love those adorable little bears. And then we have the Bunch of Balloons die. Um, I made a balloon or a shape card using this one before and I just, this is a very versatile die set. So um, like I said, I had all this, I, this idea in my head and so I had to get it out. I'm gonna trim down my cardstock to start. I cut off four inches so that my card panel or my card base would be seven inches by eight and a half inches. And then I cut my panel down to be three and a half inches by eight and a half inches. And then I've got this extra chunk here. And then let's go ahead and get our base ready. So this means I'm going to score it at three and a half inches. So when it's all closed, it'll be three and a half inches by eight and a half inches. Uh, I know there are different sizes for slimline, but that is typically the size that I make mine to fit into the envelopes that I have and make. So I'll take that other piece of cardstock, and this isn't really um, Copic friendly or alcohol marker friendly cardstock because it soaks in a lot, but this is what I had, and I do like the way it turned out, so I'm happy. But I am going to use an alcohol friendly ink that is the Memento Tuxedo Black ink, and I'll stamp that a couple of times just to make sure that I have a good crisp image before I get to coloring. And I'm also going to stamp out the bears and the balloons. I'll have those ready to go for coloring as well. So, um, but I couldn't for some reason get that middle. This is why the misty comes in so, so handy. All right, and I went ahead and cut out all the balloons using just random cardstock um, pieces that I had in my stash in rainbow order, obviously, and then I paired my Copics up to those. And so this first color grouping uh, for reds is R37 and R46. So what I was saying is this paper isn't necessarily alcohol marker friendly. It's not like it won't work, but you just have to be very, very careful about leaving your marker on the paper because it will just like absorb the ink. Um, Typically what you'd want to use for alcohol markers would be a very smooth cardstock. This is a little bit rougher cardstock, not rough. I shouldn't say it doesn't have like texture or anything like that, but it's almost like a natural kind of paper that I'm using. For my oranges, I have YR04 and you'll see that it does become a problem. I'm trying to stick mostly to the tip here, uh, but here on the R, I go out of the lines and I will fix that here in a bit with the Copic blender, but it's not really like an eraser. It just moves the ink. So I'll show you that here in a second. For my stars, we um, are coming in with a couple of colors as well. And as you can tell, we're doing rainbow. Uh, so obviously had to go rainbow if I went rainbow with all those balloons. But here I'll take the colorless blender and I'm just going to try to push that color back in. Like I said, it doesn't erase it. It just moves the color away. And it does a fairly good job. But yes, with this kind of paper that I'm using, or if you find that you're working with a paper that it just seems to absorb the color very, very quickly, try to stick mostly to the tip and move quickly. Don't keep your pen or your marker in one spot for too long. So um, with this word serious, I am trying to be quick and I'm really just sticking mostly to the tip of the marker. And if you've noticed, I've been trying to do a little bit of an ombre coloring. I don't know what it is about these style of stamps that Trinity has, which I absolutely love. You've seen me use these many times, but I just love making it look ombre for some reason. I know there are clearly other ways to do it, but I just love doing this. I feel like it gives the, the words dimension and some depth, uh, but yet still is a very simple style to use. And then I'll come back in with that lighter color just to blend that out a little bit more, but it's fun. I, I mean, these are such a great way to make um, a card. They're pretty quick and easy and just fun to color. This stamp set actually does have a matching die that goes with it. And I believe it will cut out the word serious. 
it will cut out stars and it will also cut out the celebrate banner not only the banner but it'll cut the word celebrate out as well and i don't know if it actually matches up with the stamp itself because i don't have the die I will have it linked down below so you can take a look at that if that's something that you're interested in. But I think it's really cool that Trinity Stamps does that on occasion with stamps like this, that they will have a matching die that could potentially go with it or even to be used separately, uh, which is what I think you could do with that as well. Or, in, you know, instead of using that word serious or using that celebration banner, you could use the dies instead of the stamping, which is kind of fun because then you're mixing things up a little bit. All right, moving on, I'm just using one color for the blue. I thought that would just be easier. And then for the word celebration, I do use some purples. I'll start off with some V15 and just color the word, you know, entirely just using that particular color. And then I will come in with a darker color for, you know, to do that ombre look again. I thought about bringing in a, a blue, a little bit darker blue for the banner itself, but then I just, just decided against it just because there was already plenty going on. Not that it couldn't use it, but just decided against it. But yeah, see what I'm talking about with that ombre? It's just neat and it adds a little bit of depth to what you're doing. And then once again, I will blend those out with the lighter color. I will end up actually fussy cutting this out and you'll see me do some of that a little bit later, but I love how that turns out. All right, so here are the excess images that I had gone ahead and stamped outside of filming. And I'm just gonna color both of the balloons red. <laughs> this one for sure went out of the lines a great deal. Um, when you're just not being careful, especially using a paper like this, you're, you, can, you can tend to go outside of the lines. And then it just seems to bleed a little bit more. And for whatever reason, the red Copics do bleed more on their own anyway. Um, but yeah, so I'm just coloring that balloon, leaving a little bit of a highlight area on that one edge. And then I'm going to try to color my little bears to be little black bears. I just, I don't know, I wanted them to stand out a little bit more. So for their noses, I'm going to start with some E43 in his tummy. Some E43, and then I'll come in with some E44. So it's barely a difference, but it is a little bit of a difference. And then I'll blend that out with that E43 again. And then... I've brought in some um, W markers. We're going to start with W6. I thought about using W6, 7, and 8, but in the end I just decided to use W6 and W7, which is actually very, very subtle. Uh, looking back, I wish I had used the W8 instead, but, you know, it. this definitely works. You know, I, I do, I'm finding that I like to have a little bit more contrast in my coloring. The braver that I get, the more I do Copic coloring, I just become a little bit more brave in my color choices. And uh, so I wasn't necessarily as happy with my choice of going with the lighter color, but it works out. I end up not blending that one out so, uh, so much, so then it just kind of sticks like the, it's a little bit more harsh. Not totally, but a little bit. So then I'll grab out the matching dies that go with the bears and the balloons, and I'll tack that down with a little bit of purple tape and run that through my die cutting machine. And then I will fussy cut out the word, or the, this calls for a serious celebration. And, you know, no real rhyme or reason to how I'm doing it, just kind of staying kind of close to it. And the reason I decided to do that is because otherwise it would have covered up a lot more of the balloons. So the next step is to place down balloons. I want those to look like they are coming off of the panel. And I'm going to just make it varied in how high up they are and how much is showing. Um, and I'm actually not going to use one of the greens. It'll go in the inside because you know me, I have to do the insides. And so I'm just tacking that down with some, some liquid glue. If you wanted, you could absolutely, you know, pop a few of these up with some foam tape. That would be a lot of fun. It just wasn't what I was thinking. I thought that that might be a little too much work for what I was going for here. So, um, and then with these balloons, I'm only having mostly that bottom part show. Uh, simply because it's going to get covered up by the, the the phrase. So we're just, you know, being varied with how far up and how close and everything else that they are. And I think that just gives a lot of interest to that background. It just seems like a lot of fun to have those balloons all back there. And I'm not going to add any sentiment to the inside. I will say that because this way I can leave this 
to be either a celebration for, let's say, a birthday or even possibly like congratulations on something. So, all right, now that all those are down, I'm going to grab out my guillotine trimmer. This is the fastest and easiest way that I have found to cutting all these off and it gives me the straightest line. So I'll just line that up right on the edge and then I can trim all of those down. It does get a little bit thick when you are going through all, some of those layers that are like two and three layers. So you kind of just use the heel of your hand and you can pop that down. But there we have our panel. And then I'm going to draw in the, um, the strings. But this die set does come with some strings that you could easily die cut out if you wanted to. I just chose not to do that. I'm just drawing those in and trying to make, you know, look, make them look all a little bit different. Because I thought that might be a little bit of fun. And now that I've done that, I decide that I'm going to need to ground this, if that makes any sense, because my bear is going to be on the front as well. So I just have a very tiny strip of Nina Desert Storm cardstock. I mean, it's maybe a quarter of an inch, and I'm just going to glue that to the very bottom. So this is going to be my ground for my little bear to stand. And uh, then we'll, instead of popping this up, because I originally thought I would, I'm just going to glue down our sentiment. And then I will use foam tape on the bear and the balloon. So I'll just use a couple of foam squares on the back of him and one on the back of the balloon. And then that does mean that I will have to draw in the string, but there is a stamp in there where you could very easily stamp it out. And I don't want him to just look like he's, you know, he needs to have some sort of color underneath him so that he has some shadow. So I brought on the E43 and E44. And then I'll tack down the balloon and we will hand draw in the string, which oof, wasn't a great move, but it works. And then we'll set our panel off to the side for a second before we move on to doing anything more with that. And here's where we're going to, you know, tack down the top parts of the balloons. I thought that would be fun rather than throwing those out. Let's use them. Let's put those on the inside bottom part of this card. It just makes everything go together so well. I love it. And, you know, as I've said a million times, you throw a rainbow in there and I'm all about it. So I'll just keep working those. And some of those were already glued together, so I thought we'll just keep them together the way that they are. And tack those down. And then obviously we're going to have some hanging over, so we'll do the same process that we did for the front panel. We'll just stick that inside the guillotine trimmer and trim off all the excess the exact same way that we did the front panel. But isn't that fun? All that color just makes me happy. Happy, happy. Yep, so we'll just trim that off. And then we're gonna tack down our other little guy. But before we do that, there is a stamp in there that you can ink up and make it look like the string is tied around him, which is just so cute. There's a couple different ones, a couple different choices you have. So I'll ink that up and then stamp that onto him. So it looks like the string is tied around him a few times. And then we can glue him in there. And then we can glue the balloon clear up there. And then I'll just use my T ruler along with that black marker I was using earlier to draw the line down to him. Super easy. And I love how that looks on the inside. All right, so now we have to uh, add some gems of course and so these are the crystal clear flat backed resin rhinestones by trinity and i put those into my little tidy tray which holds everything so nicely and it does look like it's white with that glue but it does dry clear and you'll be able to see that in the pictures in the end so now we have to attach that to the front of our card just using that same liquid glue and then i can't stop there i do have to make an envelope i mean right Gotta have an envelope. So I'm using some specialty paper by Tonic. This is the Golden Scales, along with the Trinity Stamp Slimline, Slimline Envelope Die. Love this die and love pairing that up with those specialty papers because then I can shove it inside these Slimline Clear envelopes. And if you have some um, white envelope labels, it goes through the mail just fine. I've already sent several cards that way and so far, so good, they all get there. But there you have it, a matching envelope, a fun, colorful, serious celebration slimline card. I would love to know what you think. If you liked this video, please hit the like button. Um, subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thank you for all the love and support you guys give, all the 
liking and commenting and especially using my affiliate links that helps me out so much it, it helps me to keep producing videos and I uh, just really appreciate everything that you guys do so thank you all so much for stopping by and I will see you very soon in another video bye everybody